Carbon monoxide kills over 400 people a year in the United States and injures more than 50,000. You can end up in trouble with carbon monoxide in any situation where fuels are being burned, and these can include your car, portable generators, and even lawnmowers. This can happen at home, on vacation, at a hotel, and at work. Award-winning engineer and combustion equipment expert John Pushkar is presenting this two-part series to point out some important information about things you should know about some common appliances and combustion systems to avoid becoming exposed to carbon monoxide. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. John, I understand that today's episode is about flu and vent piping issues and how these can contribute to carbon monoxide poisoning. What is it that people should be looking for when it comes to these systems? Layla, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Folks, it's John Pushgar here again today to bring you some important information to try to keep you safe in the world of fuels and combustion systems. Today is the second episode regarding carbon monoxide safety. In the first episode, we talked about some ways you can get in trouble regarding combustion air, and we especially tried to emphasize draft testing. Today, I want to give you some practical information, some pictures, some ways to look at things, some explanations, so that you can take a walk down your equipment and identify some potentially very serious hazards within just a few minutes. Today we're going to talk about flue gas venting systems. These are the systems that contain vents or ducts or pipes that remove the stuff that we've burned. You know there's a lot that goes on in these systems, although they appear to be very simple. I mean, it's just a piece of pipe. What can go wrong, right? It's just a piece of round ductwork. What can go wrong, right? Well, there are ways that these things need to be selected, installed, and there are ways they need to work with everything else in the room where they're installed that could mean the difference between life and death. So let's talk about why these are so complicated and why they're so susceptible to failure. One of the reasons is, is because that when we burn things, we create water vapor. Here's a basic chemical equation that shows what happens in the combustion process. You can see we take natural gas, we combine it with oxygen, and we make water vapor and heat. When we look up in the sky from a flue coming up out of a building, we often see a white cloud. That white cloud is not smoke. That's actually water vapor condensing in the atmosphere. And because there are times when we operate these things, like spring and fall, when we're heating a building, for example, this water vapor is coming off and it's coating the insides of this flue gas removal system and it's condensing. And there's water actually streaming down the inside of it. And it's slightly acidic water. So we're always corroding these systems. When the corrosion gets really bad, we end up with this sort of thing. We end up with caps or screens on the outside of the roof literally crumbling and falling apart. Sometimes it runs down the inside of the building if there's elbows that aren't sealed properly, and we have evidence of this moisture damage and corrosion that's occurring. It doesn't always have to be that there's a big hole or a, an obvious rust spot. Sometimes joints come apart, sometimes joints are loose, and all of these kinds of things can lead to big problems for us if we actually happen to be releasing these sometimes toxic gases into the breathing space. It's simple to look for and find these kinds of problems. You can have a powerful flashlight, look for evidence of the water coming back down into the system, look for evidence of holes, look on the roof for whether or not these systems are still intact and there's caps still on them. If the caps are gone or if the screening for protection is gone, we could have birds coming down into the flue looking for nests, 
squirrels. I've seen all kinds of crazy things in flu systems. None of these things are good for you. Wow. In some of those pictures, unless you knew what to look for, you wouldn't even know that there's a problem. Layla, that's very true. Some of this is very commonsensical, but some of it, you have to really kind of know what you're looking for. And that's the next topic I want to describe to you. And that's a second thing that I find oftentimes failed or broken or not adjusted properly that really causes people problems. And that's one of these. This is a barometric relief damper. It's installed in flue gas systems so that we don't have too much draft, too much suction in the flue gas system. You see, if you're designing one of these systems from scratch, you can design the flue pipe system to be of the right size, the right height. You can be careful on how you're interconnecting things. Sometimes when you retrofit these into an existing building or you try to put the flue gases into an existing chimney, things are not ideal and you need one of these devices to accommodate the draft that can be generated or the wind conditions that can occur. If you have too much draft, you'll disrupt the flame pattern. The flame will become unstable and you could compromise the fuel air ratio such that you're always generating carbon monoxide or some other dangerous toxic gases as you try to burn something. The things to look for on these kinds of systems are whether or not they're stuck open all the time. You can see in this picture, this thing has been stuck open a long time, so much so that the insulation on the pipe next to it is actually burned and scorched. Sometimes I find these obviously maladjusted. Sometimes I find pieces parts laying on the ground in the boiler room where these things have kind of been beat to death or someone has bumped into them or the adjustment is so far off that they chatter and they slam shut so many times that they break apart or become dislodged in the flue gas pipe. I don't recommend that you try to adjust these. If you find them damaged or obviously stuck open, that's the time to call the licensed plumber or the licensed mechanical contractor to come out and take a look. John, this has been very informative. I think it leaves the average person much better prepared to identify some obvious hazards. Thank you again for doing this series. Layla, thank you. I'm hoping that these two episodes enhance your awareness of things that can go wrong in flue gas systems. It's October here in Ohio. We're headed for another heating season. People are doing things like commissioning boilers again and looking at cleaning furnaces and filters. And this is the time to also pay some attention to those flue gas systems. If you see something wrong, flue gas piping disconnected, barometric reliefs that are not there anymore or are stuck open, caps on chimneys that are gone, this is the time to get hold of that professional and do something about it. And I can't stress enough at the end of the day, it's not just about having smoke detectors in your facility or in that mechanical room of that commercial facility, but it's also about having carbon monoxide detectors. These are real lifesavers. And remember folks, at the end of the day, the life that you save, it just might be yours. Hi, it's John Pushkar. I hope you found this episode useful. If you'd like to know about more ways that I can help, you can check out my website at www.prescientts.com. There you'll find information about the Prescient Technical Services Online School, my book, Fuels and Combustion System Safety, What You Don't Know Can Kill You, and also about some of the consulting projects that I've been providing to clients for the past 40 years. Things like implementing inspection and testing programs on a corporate enterprise-wide level, things like reviewing and commenting on capital equipment purchases that involve combustion equipment, and even being a legal expert if things go really wrong. Once again, thank you for attending, and remember, be safe out there. The life you save, it just might be yours.